Good morning, YouTube. So I've taken a few weeks off, but it was a great opportunity to recharge my batteries. Uh, but today we got a beautiful day. I'm back, and today we're going to talk about full Virginia flake. So let's get started. All right, guys. So we're at the first venue. I got my coffee. Unfortunately, they don't have club soda here. But to make up for that, we have some delicious sweetbreads, which is a great way to prepare for full Virginia flake. Um, got my pipe pap my pipe packed up here. Before I get into it though, and before my food arrives, I want to talk a little bit about the style and presentation of the tin covers, uh, because this one is fantastic. You know, I'd be lying to myself and lying to you guys if I said that I'm not at least partially impacted by the color scheme and the calligraphy and just the overall design of a tin cover. So it's amazing. Probably the best tin cover I've ever seen. Um, even to this day is plum cake. There's something about the colors and the calligraphy, and the, uh, just the overall design of it is just, I almost want to blow it up and just hang it up as a poster. Like that's, that's how cool this is to me. Anyway, I, th I just think it's kind of funny how the, the tin itself can kind of color your impressions or maybe partially set your expectations um, for the smoke you're about to have. And I try to be as objective as possible, but <clears throat> You know, sometimes it's hard. In the exact same vein, I'm going to show you probably the nicest pipe I've ever smoked, which is a fern down on loan to me from a friend. Beautiful pipe. You know, this is a scalpel compared to basically just a caveman's club here. This is my Boswell. And they smoke, it's night and day how they smoke. Um, this is a very precise instrument. It's all about right angles. It is just very tactile. And, and it's almost like it's, you can feel its frequency through its chassis. They're really not comparable whatsoever. So I'm gonna smoke both of them today, but where I was going with that was, you know, when I smoke out of this, it, to a certain extent, kind of ri uh, raises my expectations of the bowl I'm about to have, where this one just kind of leaves it neutral. So, all right, let's go ahead and light up. This will be the first bowl of full Virginia Flake. All right, I'm a few draws into the first bowl here. And I think one of the things that Full Virginia Flake may suffer from is a little bit of hype. It might get a little too much hype. Um, I bought this for the first time probably about six months ago. And I bought it because, you know, like many of you, I heard a lot of good things about it. And when it arrived, I had just really high expectations. And then I saw the tin, and then my expectations went up even a little bit more. But when I smoked it back then, uh, because I had kind of built it up in my mind, I don't actually remember it standing out and being that memorable of an experience. So I didn't order again. Had some, you know, I smoked the whole thing, smoked the whole tin. It was perfectly acceptable, but uh, it just wasn't special. So this is actually the second time of having it uh, in the last year or so. And once I let those expectations just fall away and just smoke it for what it is, it, to me, it's, it's much more special. It's much more unique. Um, it, I would put it hands down, you know, way ab above and beyond uh, Orlick Golden Slice. I think it, to be honest with you, I think it kills Orlick Golden Slice. Now, they're not identical. They're not supposed to be identical, but um, I know a lot of people compare those two. But this is a damn good blend. I, I really like it. Now, anyone who smokes this will probably say it, it tastes like hay. But that's a little bit strange for me because unlike all the other flavors we use to describe tobaccos, none of us actually eat hay. So it's hard to say that it tastes like hay. I think what they mean when they say that, and to be honest, I've said it myself, is that it smells like hay. And it reminds you of either a, a, uh, a barn or a horse stable or some environment where hay is the dominant smell in a small enclosed environment. And to me, just because of where I grew up and how I grew up, it reminds me of the smell I would get as a kid in, uh, in the fall going on hay rides. All right, so I'm done with my first bowl. It's time for the second bowl. So I packed this fern down here. Let's see how this treats us. So 
So here's how I describe full Virginia flake number three. It's really three components melding together, and here are their proportions. The first one is 90%, the second one is about 8%, and the last one's about 2%. So the visual that comes to mind would be the following. If I had a huge hay bale here, the kind we all used to sit on uh, next to a campfire, if I had that right here, and then underneath of that, I took a single graham cracker, just a little square, and put that underneath that hay bale, and then on top of that graham cracker, if I had just a, almost like a syringe, and put just a teardrop's worth, maybe even a dime's worth, of molasses on top of that graham cracker, underneath that hay bale, and I took all three of those things combined, and I shrunk them down to about the size of a single wafer, and put that on my tongue, that'd be the starting point. And then if you imagine what that would, what that would start feeling like, if you put it in your mouth, and just start letting it dissolve. You don't chew it, you just let it dissolve top down. You start compressing on it with your mouth. And what you would start, what you would start uh, getting the sensation of is that shrunken hay bale kind of melting through top down through that graham cracker. And once you get down to that graham cracker, you get just this little, little bit of taste of molasses coming through. But those are the proportions. It's 90, eight, and two. Obviously the dominant flavor here is hay. But that little bit of sweetness right there at the end, that's something that has taken several bowls for, for me to, uh, to pull out and to tease out. It almost reminds me of, you know, in terms of how hard you have to look for the flavor, it's almost like you have to put under a microscope, or uh, in my case, a Mead 14 millimeter high-end eyepiece. Um, you really have to zoom in to get that graham cracker taste. But in my opinion, it's there. It's there way at the bottom, way down deep. So once again, I shut the camera off when something fun or kind of cool happens. There was a, a son and his mother walk by, a guy about 25 and uh, his mother is probably in her 50s. And as they're walking by, he said, uh, that's a cool pipe right there. So to the mystery friend who lent this to me, you got a compliment. All right, so we're gonna switch things up uh, I just went from a fern down and full Virginia flake to a corn cob and some bulk Galwith and Hogarth's dark bird's eye. That's another thing I love about this hobby is that you can go from one end of the spectrum to the other from a high end pipe to a cob all in the same day and just mix it up. Just kind of create your own experience. This blend here just makes me smile. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Alright guys, so I think we'll call that a day. Uh, we had some great smoke, we had some great coffee, some great food. And now that spring is coming, I'm really excited about being able to get out there a little more often and explore the rest of the city, because um, it's still kind of new to me. And hopefully capture a few more of these videos um, over the next couple months. So. Uh, you know, to be honest with you, at least half my motivation uh, for doing this is I know a lot of you out there, you don't, you don't really have this freedom. Uh, forget about the filming aspect, that, that's less important. But you, know, you, you don't have the ability or the freedom to just smoke where you want to smoke, to smoke over a meal um, at a restaurant or smoke over a cocktail. Um, there's only a handful of places in the country where you can keep doing this. And that's really uh, my primary motivation, is that you know maybe five or 10 years from now, I'll, I'll be able to look back at these videos and remember that um, there was a time when you could. So that's important to me. But I just wanna let you know, I really appreciate all your support. Um, appreciate all my subscribers and we'll keep doing it. So we'll see you next time and thanks again.